Imagine yourself as a pro Fortnite player, but you're not just any pro. You're one of the world's best, and surrounding you are 99 other elites who are going to be competing today for the title of world champion. The gates open, and the sound of cheers and excitement almost deafen you as they can't wait to see who's going to come out on top. For 100 players, this imaginary scenario became a reality for three days. This was before online tournaments became the only way to experience competitions. Okay, guys, I'm talking about the 2019 Fortnite World Cup. It was a tournament that gave birth to legends. It put Fortnite in the center of the spotlight, and to this day, continues to influence the competitive scene. This is the story of how one tournament changed Fortnite forever. Hey guys, this is your motivation guy, your friend the one and only Keith Allen. It's time to sit back, relax, and get some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. Yo, and let's get this going. The year was 2019 and Fortnite had seen a boom in activity since its release late in 2017. Players have familiarized themselves with the free-to-play battle royale and had even begun to master the signature building mechanic. Players such as Mr. Savage and Ninja dominated the scene, while newcomers such as Booga were just starting to rise in popularity. Competition was going smoothly, but Fortnite needed some kind of just crowning tournament as the ultimate showdown. What players didn't know is that their wish would come true during the E3 party royale in February of that year. The Fortnite community would be shaken up when Epic announced a competition like no other. This wasn't just a regional tournament or a local thing, this was a Fortnite World Cup and would only feature the greatest players from across the globe. How to get in though? Well, Epic would determine who was worthy through a series of online qualifiers that would occur over the course of 10 weeks. During these qualifiers, you would either go in alone or with the duo during alternating weeks. At the end, those who managed to qualify would later be able to attend the main event in a few months time. Among the events that would be featured were pro-ams, creatives, duos, and finally, possibly the most important event, the Solos Tournament, which would crown a Fortnite world champion. So, what were the stakes? Well, aside from the fame that you would definitely get, I mean, being able to qualify, there was also the $30 million prize pool for this event. Players who managed to qualify for the event were also guaranteed $50,000 as a starting prize. The grand champion would be entitled to a $3 million payout. With the tournament announced, the fight had begun. Become the world champion required plenty of training, so click the link below and visit ProGuys.com for some pro-level coaching that can help you get ready for the next tournament. Learn new strategies, master the meta, and improve your fighting skills. Come in with any level of skill, and we're going to make sure that you beef up so much that you can start seeing improvements right away. With that, the qualifiers began, and it was a fierce fight as players trained and partnered up and scrambled their way up to the top. The qualifiers eventually came to an end, and for so many players around the world, this would be the end of their bout for world champion. During this event, 40 million players competed against each other, just hoping they claim a coveted spot on the list. By the end of the qualifiers, most of them would be gone, and only 100 would remain to fight for the solo title. You know, one of the most interesting things here is that there were actually many players who were popular and good at the game, that didn't qualify. You know, one of the most popular names at the time was Ninja, and despite being a recent addition to Fortnite's competitive scene, he was just cooking up a storm. Despite this, I mean, Ninja missed out on the qualifiers by two points. Other big names included Cypher PK, who failed to qualify due to his high ping. Nick Merckx, one of the world's best controller players, also failed to qualify but was eager to keep competing. This competition was so brutal, sometimes just being teammates didn't guarantee you a spot in the tournament. You know, while Tfue managed to qualify for his place in the top 100, his teammate Cloak did not manage managed to do the same. Needless to say, the competition was brutal. Being among the top 100 players in the world was an accomplishment all on its own though. But the real fight began now. Everything was building up towards the grand finale, the solo event that would crown the world champion and the players had been selected. The World Cup was completely jam-packed with many recognizable names such as Mongrel and Benji Fishy, Klix, Booga, and Epic Well. Many of these would also qualify for the duels event, though some would only participate in solos. Six days before the final battles would begin for world champion, players from all over the world began to trickle into New York. For many of them, I mean, they were seeing each other for the very first time after playing with each other for so long. It was an overall star event of the best Fortnite players in the world. For the 100 who had qualified for the Solo Grand Championship, they would need to start preparing right away if they wanted the best chances at winning. Luckily, Epic spared no expense and they set up a training hall in the hotel ballroom. 76 PCs were made available and players could just come in and just practice before their big match. They were going to need it for sure. 
The World Cup would take place at Arthur Ashe Stadium and would seat over 23,000 spectators, many of which included longtime fans of the esports ring, as well as family and friends of the competitors themselves. Online, the viewership, I mean, it was unlike any scene before. With a peak of 2.3 million viewers during the solo event, this was the biggest and most public event in Fortnite history. In many ways, man, it continues to be the biggest. So between July 26th and July 28th, they would hold a series of events such as the creative match and pro ams leading up to the event. It was an exciting time to be a Fortnite fan, for sure. Eventually, on the 28th, the final six matches would determine who would become the new world champion. Okay, now for the question of the day. You guys ready for this? Here we go. If a second World Cup were to happen, what would you like to see team up? Who would you like to see team up? Leave your answers in the comments sections below. All right, guys, so the World Cup gave birth to many legends, but if there's one face you automatically think about when you talk about the World Cup, come on, man, who is it? It's Booga. Like, Booga became the world champion after six grueling matches on stage. With a massive nine-point lead on game one, Booga continued to play as hard as he could to reach this goal. Even when things took a dark turn on game two, Booga just managed to keep his head in the game, and he came out the world champion. With it came the fame, the glory, and most importantly, a hefty three million dollars. You know, Booga's victory might be the one that you immediately think about, but you know, there were just other victories during the World Cup's prior days. For the duos championship, email Nyrox, Berquist, Peterson, and David Aqua Wang took home $1.5 million, each becoming the duo champions. The World Cup definitely shook things up for the Fortnite community, but it also had an effect outside as well. Like popular talk shows such as The Tonight Show and The Today Show featured Booga as a guest. You also had Fortnite hitting your favorite news outlets. I mean, this gave Fortnite more exposure in the world and possibly even inspired some of the players that are currently competing today. So Booga became the world champion in solos in Fortnite, and Fortnite just had its biggest event ever. Like, how do you top that? Well, in many ways, you don't. But the impact the World Cup had on a Fortnite competitive scene was just visible right away. Like, if you you ask some of the best players today where they started out, some of them are going to tell you the World Cup is where their careers really took off. This is because of how visible the World Cup was, and even qualifying for the event already put you on top of the list of the best players. Like, there would only be two more land tournaments before competitive Fortnite took a hit. These tournaments were DreamHack Anaheim and Australia Summer Smash. While these were indeed big tournaments, they didn't carry as much weight as the World Cup. I mean, soon after, the world was hit with the pandemic, which shut down pretty much everything. With the age of COVID beginning, you know, Epic decided to put a whole on all in-person competitions. And with that, the FNCS became the most common tournament to look forward to, with it occurring at the end of each season. All right, guys, before we start wrapping things up for today, don't forget to check out ProGuys.com for some pro-level coaching. Get yourself ready to take on any challenge. All right, so it's been three years since the World Cup, and there hasn't been another Fortnite tournament quite like it since. You know, the energy, the passion, the excitement of walking on that stage for the first time, knowing that you're among the, you know, 100 top players in the world. I mean, it's just currently unknown if there is going to be a World Cup again this year, but it's clear that players want it to happen. In fact, it's actually important that Fortnite gets another tournament of this caliber. You know, aside from the exposure Fortnite would get from such an event, I mean, it would also be a way to build up hype among the community for those that just want a chance to compete in such a large scale tournament. You know, another reason why the World Cup should come back is because the the player base and the meta have both drastically changed since we last saw Booga win the championship. Like, if the World Cup were to come back, I mean, it would've been an absolute monster of a tournament with players old and new returning to see who would actually qualify. Would it be newer players? Are we gonna see some old favorites come back once more for another shot at the title? Perhaps one day we're gonna get our answers as we wait for the greatest Fortnite tournament in the world to come back. But you guys tell me where you at, your motivation guys back. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure if you did, like it, subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let us know what you would be interested in learning more about. We love to hear from you guys. Remember, being a pro gamer, I mean, it's just full of exciting events, right? With esports constantly growing in popularity, I mean, it's inevitable that, you know, tournaments such as this one will once again happen and give us something to just cheer and be excited about. Hey man, keep up the dream, keep going, don't give up. Connect with my Instagram at your motivation guy, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.